we're in a world at the moment that is shot through with deceit and deception and you know humanity at last the, the voting public have been lied to on so many fronts there is an awakening in progress the veil is lifting right and 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 it's been happening for years now but with each passing year it seems to get more and more prominent more and more people are now seeing things as they really are i call it the awakening when the bullshit is finally cleared away and we can all see clearly what's really been happening all this time once we get to that point you know once we get through the awakening to quote jacques fresco this shit will have to go right so this says all right we're going to fix it we're not this isn't this is this is not acceptable so we're going to do something about it and so when we move from an environment of uh this is happening isn't it terrible uh or they lied to us over this uh or they lied to us over that okay once we get through all that okay yeah they lied but now it's up to us to do something about it we're all going to collectively look at each other and says we now have to do something about this let's get to it and then we'll go through a period of just discussing ideas and turning ideas into engineering outcomes you, you, you might call it commercialization or market innovation whatever you want to call it see the social structures that uh are, are going to be in play going forward are also going to be very interesting because a lot of the conventional ones are no longer trusted politics the law insurance banking how many of them how many of them are in serious trouble now you know, uh, from the context of the average person right and so everyone's tired and exhausted with with what they have to do for you know day-to-day -day living right but but once people understand they're going to be angrier than they've ever been in their lives right so so once we get through that the second part is what i call the ascension when we get past the anger and says so if we want to have a world where we actually sort of can do stuff then we've got to build something and we start to cooperate and we collaborate and it's going to be like the wild wild west but in terms of innovation innovation of all kinds on all fronts simultaneously and there'll be no magic bullet and so we're going to see the most amazing diversity of thought and diversity of outcome where everything's on a small scale but we're collaborating uh, i believe society will split into to what I, what, what I call four groups in terms of paradigm um whether this happens next year or, or, or over the next couple of years you know remains to be seen but the faster it happens the better so we can get through the the ugly bit and get to the point where we can work together but the first group i call the cornucopians these these are the people who will defend the status quo right to the bitter end and and to be frank there's nothing you can do with such people you can't convince them can't talk to them and wave goodbye move on the second group i call the vikings they're the people who will say well a bit of chaos around hey law and order let's go and take stuff yeah it's gonna take stuff right and uh but there'll come a point when that won't work uh, because, because when everything's taken now what but that group of people will re-educate the rest of society the value of changing how they do things and how people will be having to band together in local communities for their own uh safety the third group is the group i call the preppers and these are the people who will uh, attend to, all right, we've got a problem. Nothing works. We've now got to move forward with um, attending to life's needs, you know, food, water, shelter, energy. Uh, uh, and, and you'll see some amazing problem solving on that front. The fourth group is the group I call the Arcadians. And they're the people who understand that there is a problem, right? But they are going to look at the long range new human civilization on the other side of this era of disruption and instability how do we maintain all the good things in our current society what kind of society would it be what it would look like and it might take 200 years to build right and so so those the arcadians are thinking in terms of i will now develop things that i will need to see the benefit of but my great-grandchildren might it's going to be the steepest learning curve in recorded history thus far and I, and I think the, the generation to do it will be required to be stronger than the generation that 
for World War II. And that's not us, but we will become so out of necessity. And so in that environment, we're going to see human stupidity at all levels. I think what will happen is we will see some very disappointing behavior from organized structures like governments and large corporations that think they can game the system for their own benefit. I also think we will see some amazing behavior of individuals that will restore our faith in humanity. Right. And, and as a general rule of thumb, we're going to move away from global structures as the authority to more local structures. So, so th those, those guys are very used to being in charge of things and, and, and having all the wealth. And so what if we call wealth, what we call wealth is now called something else. And it's all right, you can have all the gold bars. You do that. You keep them. We're going to now do something else. Um, it, it might be bars of titanium or bars of silicon, for example, <laughs> so, that that requires energy to make it. I, I, I think, for example, there's a, there's a push to globalize things and centralize things. We're going to move away from that. And we're now going to go to a more decentralized fashion. In practical terms, the local city council will have the balance of power instead of the federal government. We will still have a federal government, but what they actually do and their authority to push up people around will be much, much less. You're going to go through the you know, dark tea time of the soul and things will get really, really rough. And at some point, society will collectively stand up and say, All right, th this, this is going to change. We ain't going to have this anymore. Right. And there's a reason there's a reason we cooperate and collaborate with each other. And there's a reason we're nice to each other as opposed to being rude. And so when things get difficult, the ability to collaborate in the face of adversity is how societies survive. But what, here in Finland, for example, they've, they've had some tough times in the past and, and how the Finnish culture has met them has been, been quite inspiring, actually. You know, you know, there is a strength in these people. Uh, and, and then you go sort of like, you know, talk to the, you know, the Russian culture and they've had some terrible things happen too. And they understand quite well hardship. And uh, and they uh, what do they fall back on? Like in um, the Western world, like in Australia, where I grew up, it's a very materialistic society now. And and so um, it, it's all about the toys you could buy and, and, you know, you throw them away and the following week you get some new toys. Uh, that's what makes you feel good. Whereas in the let's say the Russian culture, when things get really, really rough, they fall back on their myths and legends and, mm -hmm. and uh, the stories they tell each other, the narratives. And what's interesting is in the West, we've made a point of destroying those things to the point where you're burning books and actually pulling down statues and rewriting the past. And I think, for example, the Western world at some point is going to stop what it's doing and, and then it's going to look at itself and says, who thought this was a good idea? Where we turn on each other yeah you know, there, there was a time for example you had the concept of the village and everyone in the village uh collaborated and coordinated together and the village itself was a very strong social unit and it was much stronger than the individual whereas in the modern world that's been shattered and the family unit has also been destroyed as well and so now we've got a whole lot of individuals that can't do anything and are completely dependent on the system around them to survive it, it's it's um it's going to be a really steep learning curve but pain is a great teacher so it doesn't really matter what your starting point is you'll get there eventually one way or another and and so but people sort of say oh we're doomed the future is so dark i said well we faced darkness before and we'll face it again it's oh but it's going to be tough yep and, and so but again pain doesn't necessarily have to kill us you know, do you face the future with open hearts and open minds? Um, or do you want to think in terms of fear? And if you think in terms of fear, stay where you are and the Vikings will be along shortly.